Now, at the end of the previous video, I said in the next video we would um, we would uh, begin the discussion of why this set is in fact dense in our LP space. But I want to do one thing just before that. I want to explain to you why this set is not this set S is not equal to the set of all sequences, all infinite sequences of rational numbers, so Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, etc, where all of the terms are just rational numbers. Because intuitively that seems to be what this is going to converge on, uh, but that is not the case. And I want to explain why. The first argument is that this is not this set here, this set of ra sequences of rational numbers is not countable, not countable. Well, the reason for that is that, um, and a very easy way of seeing it, is that if you, um, a subset of this will be the sequences, will be that set that we called T in the previous, um, in the previous set of videos on why an infinity was not separable. So the set T, remember, was the set of sequences that say X, where the elements X1, X2, X3, X4, etc. These elements, Xi's, were all equal to 0 or 1. So it was all sequences where the terms of the sequences were just zeros or ones. And we saw that these uh, were binary expansions for real numbers in the interval 0 to 1. And you could actually put them in bijection with this interval 0 to with the numbers in the interval 0 to 1. And that interval 0 to 1 is not countable. Therefore, this cannot be countable. And this is a subset of this because all sequences in here will be in here because x1, x2, etc. being 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are certainly rational numbers. So any sequence in here, I can pick these rational numbers so that they are uh, the same, so, so that the overall sequence is the same as this one here. So this set cannot be possibly be countable. Um, so that's the first argument for why this cannot be equal to S. That Cantor always simplifies things. I mean, for instance, Liouville's proof of transcendental numbers is horrendously complicated, whereas Cantor's proof of transcendental numbers, just through arguments of countable infinities and uncountable infinities, is so much simpler. And that's a very simple argument for why S cannot be equal to this, because this is uncountable, and we've just proven S is countable. Um, another way of seeing it, perhaps a more intuitive way, is that in this set you will have sequences like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, etc. And you just continue ones forever. You will have the sequence that is just 1 forever. That will be an element of this set. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't put is equal to, I should put is an element of. Okay, uh, that will not be an element of our set S. The reason being that it asks, if you are an element of the, of the set S, you must be in one of the TNs, because the set S is the union of all the TNs. So you must be in a set TN. But if you're in a set TN, that means that you have a last term, basically. You're, uh, and after, after that last term, that, after that nth term, all the terms in the sequence are zeros. Now, for no n is a natural number, uh, is that there is no point, basically, there is no term in this sequence after which all the terms are equal to zero. So this cannot be an element of any of the TNs. So it cannot be in the set S because it's not in any of the things you're unioning to get the set S. That's a more intuitive argument for why this set cannot be equal to this set. And that's... Um, uh, uh, an intuitive mistake that I, I, I certainly made when I first saw this proof. I was like, but surely that that sequ that thing, that great big union you're taking, it's just going to become this, and that can't be countable. Uh, but that's wrong, and this is the reason it's wrong, because it has these sequences uh, of, these infinite sequences of ones, uh, well, n these infinite sequences of non-zero terms, basically, is the reason that this is different from uh, this setup here. Okay, uh, so that's just a little video to um, help.